Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Imani Ma'at, and we're here for our third episode of Progressively Yours Health and Wellness Podcast. We have an amazing show for you this evening, so we are not going to speak too much about ourselves. I'm here with my co-host. I'm Bernard Kynes, and I'm so delighted that we are having our third part, uh, podcast and that you are here to join us tonight. As uh, Dr. Imani has said, we have an outstanding show for you. And before we get to our outstanding guests, a few things that I'd like to share with you, our listening audience, regarding our host, Dr. Imani. This past Saturday, uh, Dr. Imani was was a recipient of uh, her story award, which was awarded by the Women's Federation for World Peace. She was one of four recipients of this award for her accomplishments, both nationally and internationally. And I want to read a sentence to you of what the president said to her uh, in a letter that she received today in honor of this award. She writes, your reminder that life is about continuing to become, learning how to push past fear and doing things anyway in our life. And you have exemplified that by refusing to be pigeonholed and that you are, and that is your light. Thank you for sharing your story. I was able to be present to witness this award and she was, she was very deserving along with the other recipients. And we're very proud of you, Dr. Imani. So, uh, we want to hear a little bit more, so there's a clip that our producer Toya will play at this time. Amazing woman, a woman of peace. Uh, so this is from Women's Federation for World Peace USA. We hereby recognize Dr. Imani Maat on this day, August 6, 2022. We honor your exemplary work to creatively promote holistic healing and helping many to thrive and find healing, oh, holistic health and find healing. Based on your journey of overcoming unimaginable challenges, we applaud your service to your community filled with love and compassion. So with that, we honor you, we congratulate you, we thank you for everything you've done and more. And the floor is yours. Please uh, share your story. Ooh, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to send healing prayers to President Selly for a, a speedy recovery. And I'd like to graciously and humbly accept this momentous Her Story Award by the Women's Federation for World Peace. I'd also like to publicly thank my good friend, Dr. Ua Onyoha Osimari, in nominating me for this prestigious award. It's truly an honor. I encourage everyone to become a member of this organization as they are truly offering amazing programs of education, hope, and care to families, children, and communities in the U.S. and throughout the world. I'm grateful to Dr. Moon and her husband. She is affectionately and respectfully called the mother of peace for having the vision to create an organization dedicated to world peace during a time when it is so badly needed. I like the name of former First Lady Michelle Obama's book entitled Becoming. We are always growing and recreating ourselves. At least I believe life is better, richer, and more exciting when we're doing so. Mine is not a rags to riches story. The ancestors have done that and have opened great paths for me. <laughs> and I was <clears throat> truly honored and uh, and humbled by that award. Thank you for for sharing it with the audience, Bernard. You're absolutely yeah. welcome, everybody. So, as we begin now um, for our spiritual opening, let us prepare for our show to continue. And I like to share. Um, a reading from Dr. Howard Thurman. 
and this reading uh, came to me earlier today as I was thinking about our guests for uh, this evening. And I wanted to say to them prior to my former introduction, both to uh, Elizabeth and Ofimo, that these words that Dr. Thurman wrote in his book, Meditation of the Heart, I think exemplifies who you are, who you represent, who you represent into in the community and into in the world. So uh, these words, which is entitled, Myself, a High Priest of Truth. Myself, a high priest of truth. I will make of my life a high priest of truth. I will make of my talents, whatever they are, a high priest of truth. This I do when I use them to enrich life, to render life more human, to make life more gracious and personal than it would be otherwise. I recognize that my talents may be special endowments or they may be the result of the advantageous path along which my life has come from the beginning. I will make of my remembering a high priest of truth, a purpose in my heart that I shall not use my memory to store up those things which fester, poison, and destroy my living. My life, or my living and the life of others. I shall make it my study to preserve my soul in balance and liberty. I will use my memory to store up the excellent things of my experience. In this way, I shall lay up treasures in heaven. I will make of myself a high priest of truth. I will recognize the supremacy of the ideal of God likeness to which more and more by God's help, I will give myself. Despite the number of times I fail, despite all the limitations and inadequacies which beset me, by God's strength, I will make of myself a high priest of truth. I will make of my life a high priest of truth. Thank you. We are indeed blessed today to have Ofimo and Elizabeth Omalami. They are a couple that have fed millions since their career. Well, before I do the introduction, you might as well do a positive affirmation. I got ahead of myself just a little bit, and then I will come back to the introduction. Oh, that's okay. I love that high priest of truth. That is truly, truly powerful. So um, I have a calendar that I did of positive affirmations back in 2014 called, the same as my blog talk radio show back then, Stepping Into My Power Productions. Monthly affirmations for the inner child in each of us. So here's one. I just kind of randomly picked one, and it actually related to the theme of my acceptance speech from the award on Saturday. And so the, the calendar contains um, af um, acronyms that are um, kind of turned into affirmations. So this one says, I prefer to be free. And free stands for forever remarkable, empowered, and exemplary. Some, some say, dare to think outside the box to accomplish incredible things. What if we remove the box altogether and reach for the stars? This is an amazing life. Don't give your power over to others. It is in a state of pure liberation that we figure out who we are and where we're going in life. This month, I will focus on those things that make me more free to do the things that are important in my life. 
And I will turn it back to you, my co-host. Thanks for indulging me. Thank you. Thank you. Now is um, time for the introduction. Thank you for that affirmation. A female and Elizabeth are a couple that have fed millions since their career in human services, which began over 40 years ago. Daughter of civil rights leader, the Reverend Hosea Williams, the one that I met and knew personally. Current member of the National Low Income Housing Coalition and CEO of Human Services Organization, Hosea Health Incorporated. Elizabeth grew up in the civil rights movement in the South. After graduating from Hampton University, she married her husband, the acclaimed actor, Simo Omalami. He is a graduate of Morehouse College here in Atlanta and an acclaimed actor with over 100 film and television credits, including Saints and Sinners, Forrest Gump, Trading Places, The Hunger Games, The Firm, Bringing Out the Dead, Women of the Movement, Raising Dion, and so, so many more. However, both of these servants turned away from their acting careers to feed the hungry, not just in the metro area, but throughout the world. In 1973, they created one of Atlanta's first theater companies, entitled People's Survival Theater, here in Atlanta while working with the community as the CETA Outreach Coordinators. She continued her acting career locally and appeared in numerous stage and television projects as her husband, the female, traveled back and forth between Los Angeles and New York, where he appeared on Broadway. Their experience in New York led them to the decision to raise their two adult children here in Atlanta as they returned to the South to continue their acting careers in many projects, including the Ray Charles story. Tyler Perry's Madea Family Reunion, The List, In the Heat of the Night, My Funny Valentine, The Rosa Parks Story, Selma, Come Back Dad, In the Meantime, The Blind Side, and A Raisin in the Sun, just to name a few. One of the many plays in which she, Elizabeth, was in was The Best of Enemies about a close relationship between a civil rights worker and the Grand Dragon of the KKK. All the while, as they made all of these accredited performances and numerous others uh, that are not mentioned, they continued to extend their care and service throughout the community, feeding many, serving throughout Atlanta, Georgia, and throughout the world. So there is much more that I can say, but since they will be featured on our show again, I'm going to stop here and welcome them to our show, Afimo and Elizabeth Omalami. Thank you. So, um, you mind know, something? Uh, so we have a little technical problem going on in terms of uh, them being available. Anything that we can continue, we can continue to talk until we have them back in the studio. Okay, that would that would be fine. I'm uh, I'm certainly flexible. You know, I like um, I like starting this show with. Uh, the spiritual and the, the, the affirmations, because it, it, it helps, I think, to, to get us grounded and our audience grounded. 
you know, we all live such busy lives and we're just, you know, moving around so much every day that uh, sometimes we just need to stop and to breathe a little bit. So um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm always excited about starting out just, um, you know, just being able to, to take a deep breath, to relax, to think about something outside of not necessarily related to the show that we have planned. But, um, you know, I mean, I, I think flexibility is good. It looks like I see them in the background again. They're trying to log back on and come back on with us. So we, we are ready for you all. Whenever uh -huh. day you are. Welcome. Welcome to our show. And um, the Famo and Elizabeth Omelami. What an honor to have you all. I, I, um, when I hear your credits, I get nervous. I'm like, wow, they've done so much. <laughs> you know, they've just <laughs> led exemplary lives, just touching so many lives through your acting careers. And um, I think maybe even more importantly, through feeding millions and millions of people and, and helping the homeless in Atlanta and in the areas around Atlanta. So we're, we're just delighted to, to have you and uh, to be able to chat with you for a little while. So no, um, the honor is ours. Thank you very much for this wonderful privilege that we uh, just delighted to be a part of all of this. And trust me, being in this business, we know what it's like to uh, have challenges, you know, whether it's technical or spiritual, because <laughs> you can't see people without going through, and you sure can't be on the set without something going wrong. So trust me, we've been uh, well worked out as far as patience in, in this aspect, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. Yes, we and being flexible is is important. So let's um let's jump let's jump right in. Um, Elizabeth, I think it'd be great for our audience to hear a little bit more about your dad and how he started your the organization and um, what it, what it was like growing up with a, a major civil rights leader who was so dedicated to the community. Well, thank you and and congratulations. Yes on on you know your award just uh, um working tirelessly for years and thinking nobody's watching but people are watching yeah i i, I, felt I, um, I, I really i'm really proud of you for your work um so you know a lot of people don't know who hosea williams was today unfortunately uh my father was uh named Hosea Williams. And he was the national field organizer for Dr. Martin Luther King. So when you talk about the people that were on the executive staff in the circle closest to Dr. King, he was one of those people, along with people like Bevel, and Ralph Abernathy, and uh, so many others that Jesse Jackson, uh, those kinds of uh, staff members. Um, he was the man singly most responsible for integration in the Savannah, Chatham County area first. And that's how Dr. King heard about him and hired him to come to Atlanta. So we moved to Atlanta in 1965. Uh, for him to work full time with SCLC. And of course, as you know, SCLC uh, uh, didn't have a budget, wasn't able to really pay people. But luckily my father was a chemist. And so he was able to really make uh, a decent living for his family while being in the civil rights movement. He is the only African-American leader from that era that has been an Atlanta city councilman a DeKalb County commissioner uh, and uh, have uh, a seat in the Georgia legislature for 16 years. He was instrumental in uh, the Selma Montgomery March across the Edmund Pettus Bridge uh, and had been working in Selma for many years with the people there that were the real heroes 
of that march and of that movement. Um, and so he was it placed in critical places to uh, his work impacted both the passage of the Civil Rights Bill and uh, many uh, of the strong legislations that came forth from the Civil Rights Movement. The Voting Rights Act uh, was the second uh, uh, legislation that um, sort of the proprietor of. And so when Dr. King passed away in 1968, and of course, I, I'm just jumping into the trying to get to the present because his okay. life was just just amazing, just an amazing chemist, an amazing people leader, a servant leader. Um, he was very bitter and angry about many of our black politicians and African-Americans who made it to a certain economic level, but then didn't turn around and go back as saying, go for whatever you do mm -hmm. and live up mm. the people, you know? He lived a yeah. Sankofa life. Wow. And um, when Dr. Uh, King died in 68, the, 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 the unit just splattered. Mm -hmm. I mean, they scattered, they, they were trying to hold it together. But uh, the trauma and the shock of his murder, even though I think they kind of expected it. And then all those big personalities trying to come together without that leadership, uh, they, they, they kind of scattered and he scattered down, uh, went on a 17 country African tour, brotherhood tour, because they needed to get him out of the country because they mm -hmm. thought he would do something. He was the rabble rouser. He was the direct action guy. He was Martin, as they said, Martin Luther King's bull in the China cabinet. So his job was to go around So, there, as we experience this technical difficulty, we can see and hear that uh, her father, uh, Imani, was uh, instrumental in so many things as uh, before he even began to start the organization of uh, Jose P. the Hungry, uh, which he led uh, in with great honor and leader. I knew him when I was in seminary. Uh, I was president of our student government. And for Thanksgiving, because at, at that time, this was back in 1987, uh, he really, when the feeding of the hungry uh, was really boosting, I was able to invite him to be a guest preacher on the campus. And um, that rebel rouse, the theme that uh, she was talking about, got me in hot water with some of uh, my student uh, peers uh, because they, they thought, well, why did you invite Jose Williams? And so I said, because he has a message for us. And so we became uh, friends back there then. Um, uh, and so um, I, um, when I was pastoring, his office was around the corner from my, my church on Memorial Drive. And one, and we would, I would meet and see him around the corner and we would we would have a conversation. I never forget him telling me that at that time it was up to us young preachers to continue to carry on the fight for caring for our people, uh, which is what we are about in terms of uh, our healthy ideal that we want to provide for those who listen to our show. Absolutely. When you met him, was had he already started Hosea Feed the Hungry? Yes, um, this was in '87, and I don't know the exact year that that ministry had begun. Um, but he would that was his way of uh, working to get help and volunteers uh, because he was feeding the, uh, the homeless in the community for Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving meal. Mm -hmm. Christmas, those were the two two major ones that he um, 
in the organization had, um, had, had was involved in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see our guests in the waiting room again, and hopefully they can uh, come back on. If they can't, we can always go to a little brief station break. Um, as, as you said, we like introducing health and wellness um, programs and products and services. And um, both you and I over you know, the years have talked a lot about quantum energy and about mm -hmm. sound frequencies. And so I thought it might be nice to, to uh, introduce our audience to something that, uh, a device that I really like called the AO Scan, which basically mm -hmm. uses your voice and some other details about who you are to listen to you and when it listens to you, it's looking for missing frequencies. And, um, and it basically, I don't want to use the word analyzes, but it, it assesses what's, what's missing, which relates to your health profile. And it gives you mm -hmm. those tones that you need that you're missing from your, your voice. And it, it's really an amazing, um, like I've got a, it comes in both tablet and phone size. So I, you know, I go big, so I got the tablet. Um, Bernard has the phone size, but I think um, I may have a little, just a little two minute piece that will tell you more about this um, device and what it does in terms of, it gives you a, like a nine page report. And in that is included uh, four tones that we've been told if you listen to those, those tones morning and night for two weeks, then you know that's that's almost like 30 years of psychotherapy because it really goes deep in terms of the emotional you um so it's you know it kind of relates mind body and spirit but let's see if um if toya can bring that up that little piece it'd be nice to to watch while we're waiting for our guests to come back have you ever felt frustrated waiting to be seen when you're not feeling your best or ever struggled through tests and expensive procedures without ever finding real relief. Imagine if you could get a better understanding of your overall well-being right now, in minutes. What would that mean to you, or to your family? We'd like you to know there's a whole new way to improve your comprehension surrounding your wellness, using a total body scanner unlike any other, right in your own home. This groundbreaking new technology helps you to better understand your body's needs and wellness status, and it's available to you and your family right now. Here's how the science works. Every organ in the human body vibrates at a particular frequency. When illness appears, this frequency changes. Think about it like tuning a guitar. When the string frequencies are incorrect, the music will not sound harmonious. When your body's frequencies are restored, you restore harmony to your whole body, energizing and optimizing your mental, emotional, and nutritional states. We found that people who experienced this technology were so excited they started telling everyone. So we also created an income opportunity where people can earn a little extra by sharing the product. No more wondering, no more worrying. Take charge of creating your best life. Learn more about how you can retune, revitalize, and restore your own body harmony by clicking the link below. All right. So, yes, right. AO Scan, it's, it's one of my favorite tools. Some would say it's one of my favorite toys, but we have our guests back. So I'm not, I, I, I just want to um, follow up that, that little brief ad by saying if people are interested in getting in and having a trial scan for free, you can go to my little, um, my appointment site. It's heal, the word heal, H-E-A-L dot me, M-E slash D-R Imani, Dr. Imani. And make sure it's all lowercase, heal.me slash Dr. Imani. And I'd be happy to, to do a brief scan for you and send you your nine-page report, which is just amazing. You'll love it. Uh, plus yeah. the tones. 
Okay, so moving back. Welcome yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. The DNA froze as we welcome them back. Can you can you hear us? Thank yes. you. So so we'll shift uh uh Elizabeth Tofimo tell us a little bit about the history of Hosea Helps and um about the vision that you uh that you both have that connects with the vision that your father had about feeding the hungry. Thank you. Well, I, I just think uh, it was a, a shared vision in the sense that we saw the community really going through the most challenging times and he was very aware of all of that and began training and mentoring us. We didn't know at the time We are definitely going to have to have them on again <laughs> because no um, doubt, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, they they have such a wealth of information to share, and just the biggest hearts I have seen. You know, this month we're we're totally dedicated to highlighting some of the important not for profit organizations, both in Atlanta and around the country. And I, you know, couldn't start think of a better place to to um, continue our journey with nonprofits than to have. Well, and, and the beautiful thing about what they continue to do and have been continuing even during this pandemic is finding creative ways to feed uh, people in the community. But they, over the years, they've expanded what they do. For example. Uh, bar, people volunteer, and if those of you who are in, you don't have to necessarily be in the metro Atlanta area, you come from around the country to participate in sharing during, especially the high holidays, Easter, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Uh, they have barbers, hairdressers, uh, people who come and share, uh, cut hair for uh, those who are homeless, uh, massage therapists, volunteer times, uh, and they have an outstanding staff who are just highly, highly devoted to helping those who are in need. And so um, it is a tremendous uh, organization that is constantly giving back. And in times like these, uh, that is essential, and they are, um, and we are. We're just so grateful that they're in the community. We are. And um, this might be an opportunity. You know, as, as the show grows, we I see I'm seeing comments in the side. And um, this is not necessarily interactive, but um, perhaps we can just take a second to respond to, um, to some of them. I see, I see something that says, by the way, something about New Rochelle. So I guess I was getting a, a new Rochelle woo -woo, for the award <laughs> that was mentioned earlier. Um, I also see my good friend, Joy Ed Ed Edgerton, who says she'd love to experience the scanner. So good, we will we'll make that happen, Joy, and anyone else who's interested. And they yeah, are yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. It must be our Wi-Fi. I maybe. know that maybe, you know, we, we need a, uh, producer like Tanya to come teach us how to do this. Uh, but go, I hope, hopefully we can not be disruptive uh, because yeah, no, uh, not at all. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing issue in America. We, we don't know about hungry children. We don't know that one in five families does not eat from free lunch on Friday to free mm. lunch on Monday. Mm. And that of the 1,200,000 people in Georgia that experience food security, uh, 800,000 of them were children. 
So how do we expect our children to go to school and learn on empty bellies? Because it's not about sometimes not having food, but it's eating hot dogs and white bread all the time. It's mm -hmm. eating chips and dips for dinner. Yeah. So the quality of food as well as the quantity of food is something we address at Hosea Helps. And that's the legacy that was passed to us. But I don't think that people know what an emergency it is. And can I add also that uh, this journey uh, started with Hosea Williams. In 1970. Uh, seeing somebody eat out of the garbage can and decided to do something about it. And as a result, this journey has forced us to deal with the uh, good and the bad and the ugly in our own personality, in our own truth seeking, because you can't help anybody if you're not on that path as beautiful uh, mm -hmm. verses that you read about truth. You, you, that's the only way you're gonna help anybody we, we know we are in such an unenlightened society uh, that's praying for that Aquarian door of awakening to open. And it's the mm -hmm. only way we're going to elevate ourselves and, and these precious children who are depending on us to help them find their way out of this darkness of poverty and hunger and violence and mm -hmm. the sanity of it all. But until our society, our government, those uh, uh, one percenters controlling much of the resources come to a reckoning of this darkness that, that, that has plagued us all, we would never move to the next level civilization of a, a civilization three or four to a higher level. So this whole journey of poverty and hunger so-called war against drugs and corruption and all, it's a reflection of who we are because the people running these things are so insane to believe that how can you brutalize a people for three to 400 years and expect that group not to have serious residual effects right. from all of that? But right. many people are insane and many are just simply ignorant enough to believe, well, we passed the laws, you got your freedom and we're done with it. We, we owe nothing to what has happened to you or your people. That was what our ancestors did. And they try to dismiss it that way, knowing you can't disconnect from something your bloodline, your, your past has connected you to. And that's exactly where we're positioned. So, yeah. Doing this work, you experience in your own personal life and a collective journey of the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you try to work your way from the ugly to the bad, moving toward the good. Mm -hmm. Praying for that enlightenment to come quickly, sooner than later, yeah. uh, in, in, in what we're living in right now, Dr. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow, very, very, very well said. Um, uh, Bernard, were you going to say something? No, I was going to say the same word she just said. I was very well said. And I, I was thinking as you were articulating those facts that the two of you have open hearts to want to continue this work and this vision. And as your hearts are open toward what you're doing, uh, you care for yourselves and for others immediately around you. Uh, along the way, yeah, and what continues to inspire you to keep your hearts open and to give as graciously as you both give? Well, um, I, I will say that that uh, somewhere along the way, it changed from a job to a calling, and mm. it just that we're any more special than anybody else 
but we made a decision. It's like our marriage. We've been married for 44 years, and we made a decision to stay married. Well, we made a decision to stay in this ministry. Mm -hmm. um, it's as if you could bring a little bit of light to anybody's world. And we do everything. We talked to Lady Dow from killing herself. When mm -hmm. I was in Philadelphia getting an award, she called the office. And I was on the phone with her for three hours, along with another case manager. Right now, we have four single mothers with children living in hotels because mm -hmm. they have nowhere to live. They were living in their car. So we just try to bring light. And we decided to do it. And it's just the grace of God that keeps us moving forward from day to day. Well, you, you're doing an incredible job and you are role models to so many people who aren't quite sure where they're going, what they, what they want to do. Some people are in, you know, getting paid, you know, getting paid really well on some jobs and they, you know, go home and watch TV, eat something and go to bed. And, you know, you all are, are out there every day and you've been doing this for 40 years, 45 years, a long time. And it's just, you know, we, we really appreciate all that you do for people. Um, and, um, you know, there's, there's really no words in there. I know that you need, you always have volunteers and you have people supporting your organization. How can the community get involved in um, Hosea Helps and the work that you're doing? Oh, no. A little bit frozen up again. Oh, okay. So there's there's some there's some information across our screen. There's four ways to give. You can go to their website forhosea.org. Uh, you can also text them. Text two zero two 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 to Hosea H O Z E A H O S E A. Excuse me. Uh, cash app. They can take a cash app donation at dollar sign Hosea helps. That's H O S E A helps H E L P S. And you can also write to them um, by mail to PO box 4672 Atlanta, Georgia 30302. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. And you all are helping us by coming and giving our staff wellness workshops and I want to thank you both because they are burnout. You know, they mm -hmm. just this past weekend fed over 500 families in one day at an apartment complex where they're relocating all mm -hmm. those families. So they um, need health and wellness from you guys. They need your workshops. Mm -hmm. And we thank you so much for helping Hosea Helps. Help <laughs> We're helping the We're helpful. 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 And it's, it's, it's our total honor and pleasure to be able to be up that close and personal with, with the two of you and to, to work with your staff. So it's, it's been such a pleasure. I'm sure but look at how blessed we've been from the Sankofa experience. One of the stories that affected me on my journey as one who wants to know, which is what a FAMO means, is the story from Ifa Divination. As you know, one of the ancestors Arumila uh, brought the wisdom of the gods down. And he tells the story in Ifa about Ogun, one of the Orishas, who came to town, but the people were doing an ebba. An ebba is a collective ritual to bring uh, rain, to bring uh, good fortune, healing, to move against whatever is in opposition. Mm -hmm. And part of the air ball was that nobody could talk. Ogun comes to town, didn't understand that. And each place he go, nobody speaks to him until the point he had reached a place of total rage and furious power and exploded on the people. He ended up killing everybody in that village. No. But when he finally found the answer, doctor, 
they explained to him what had happened. He was so shaken by the, the power of his darkness that he said, I can't live among humans like this again. And he became known as the Orisha, the God who basically uh, dwells alone in the woods and the forest because he's a hunter. He mm -hmm. controls metal. He, he understands magic. Uh, anything blacksmith, cars. Uh, they used to have a chain consecrated to him. When people came to the courts in Nigeria, they had to stand in that consecrated chain and, and swear to tell the truth knowing that Ogun did not play and would bring retaliation, retribution against you. But it's still dealing with the whole idea of the dark side that we can only get to where we want to by facing that part. And that story has never left me. There are many other wonderful Orisha stories because they had that human side of doing a lot of terrible things as well as the good things they had the power to do as well. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, they really want to understand some of the wisdom of our ancestors. Go to Ifa Divination. Go and search up Arumila and, and what, the, what the Orishas had to say, because their stories dealing with our own lives in the truest Sankofa experience that you could possibly have. Mm -hmm. Wow, I could listen to you yeah. all day long. If I know. <laughs> wow. mm -hmm. And I will have to do some more research because it just rolls off your tongue. So you know this stuff, you live this stuff. And yeah. Um, it's it's really yeah. powerful. I, I guess what is what it is important is the application to today. What does it mean, you know, to to yes. live your life um, aware of uh, the Orishas and and the, the messages that they shared with us? Um, you can you, you do have to look back and and understand, you know, where we've been in True. order to move forward in a way that. It makes sense, and it's going to empower us and, and um, stimulate us to do the right thing. Yes, it's so painful to watch the violence and the killing of our people. Yeah, it, it, you can't, you can hardly bear it. And every day you keep hearing, especially our young kids are mm -hmm. in, in the crossfires of this insanity. And we, as warriors of liberation, know we must do our part in bringing yeah. our light to that situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. to. It's on yeah. our call, it's on our ship, and our hearts keep breaking. Every time mm -hmm. our black women have cried an ocean of tears. Ocean of tears. And loss. Yeah. We, we have to move, and that wisdom to deal with it is right there in the Sankofa experience. Mm -hmm. But we have to glean from it. We have to drill down deep to pull it up. But it's calling out to us, saying, here, here, here's what we know about it. Take it and use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially if we call us, and we all want to be liberated from those things that keep enslaving us in the deepest emotional and mental and psychological way. Right. We mm -hmm. found our freedom. Mm -hmm. So the uh, uh, Jose Feed the Hungry is just one layer of all the things we are trying to offer to our people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So they can just search deep for themselves. That, so what is this really about beyond the poverty, beyond my hunger, not being able to pay the bills? It's far deeper. Mm -hmm. yeah, we want to and, get to that. Yeah, well, you, and yeah. You, and, you both understand me, what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and absolutely. when you say it's for deeper, one of the important elements is your opportunity to give back and allowing the persons that you serve graciously to feel seen, heard, and understood, cared for with empathy and compassion. And even in the midst of their poverty, pain, and suffering, when they experience that love that's coming from you, it gives them a boost of inspiration to continue to put one foot in front of the other. And so you're not trying, you are doing so. Mm -hmm. You are doing so Amen. with the gift and strength 
that the Creator has endowed in your spirits and in your hearts. So we're, yes. we're grateful and we're humble uh, to mm -hmm. who you are and what you do. We only have a few minutes left, and I want to ask uh, a very question for a very brief answer because we will have you back if you if you're open to coming back to be on our yes. show. Is, is, is that a yes? Yes. So 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 tell us uh, briefly uh, just one accomplishment that you both are proud of that uh, that you achieve and continue to achieve at Hotel Fita Hongu. Well, um, we are in a new headquarters. We were actually battered and bruised as an organization and tried to crush us. But the mm -hmm. grace of God is on this organization and we know that it's God, that it's not us. <laughs> we have a brand new $3 million headquarters, uh, 40,000 or more square feet worth of office and food bank. Uh, where we hold three to 400 pallets of food at a time. And so we are the largest African-American food distribution site in the Southeast region that we know of, feeding over 51,000 people a year. Mm -hmm. That's only because we trusted. Because everyone was telling us it couldn't be done. Mm -hmm. We're not going to give money to a Black female they're not going to give money to two black people. Oh, you just heard everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. but we trusted our walk with God and it's been uh, a glorious hallelujah moment that we can see sandwiches in the children's mouths and mothers finding housing and jobs. It's been wonderful. But more so to me, it has been the legacy of our children our daily Omelami and Juanita Ramey uh, coming on board to continue the legacy and us introducing our grandkids to what it is because they come too. Because if you don't duplicate yourself, you have failed, basically. Many um, right. movements have failed because the leaders didn't duplicate themselves and those who should take up the mantle after them. Mm -hmm. Part of our greatest achievement is to bring our children and grandchildren to offer them the opportunity to walk this road and to continue the legacy as we did with Hosea Williams and the wonderful civil rights leaders. Mm -hmm. We're carrying on what they started. And I pray our children would do the same and that would be a great accomplishment. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Well, great. We, want, we want to thank you for coming and being with us. And in spite of the technical difficulties, you you have graced us graciously and so beautifully. And uh, I bow to you and with gratitude <laughs> and grace. Imani, uh, take it out from here. We have about three minutes remaining. Okay, well, I, I also want to um, echo Bernard's sentiments. Uh, it's just, it's an honor to have you all and to know about the good works that you're doing and to be able to, to get together with you and your staff on occasion when, it, when, uh, when we can make it happen. And um, we, just, we just wish you all continued um, success in terms of touching people's lives, 51,000 people feeding a year, that is amazing. That's an amazing accomplishment. So we salute you and all that you do. And we want people in our audience to please support you. Let's get those, those ways of support back on the screen so people can see it. Four ways to give. The website for Hosea.org. You can text 20222 to Hosea, H-O-S-E-A. You can use Cash App and go to dollar sign Hosea Helps. And finally, you can also by mail uh, send information or your donation to P.O. Box 4672, Atlanta, Georgia 30302. And with that, we'd like to thank you. We look forward to seeing you again. We will have you back, definitely. For have certain. a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And, um, that was uh, that was grand. That was beautiful. Um, 
I just want to say, uh, as we're working on next week's show, we're, we'll have another interesting guest with, that we won't name tonight. But in two weeks, I, I want to prepare our audience uh, with the show that I will be in Ghana. That's my plan anyway, to be in Ghana two weeks from tonight. And we will be working to have a broadcast where I'm in Ghana and the show will kind of be devoted around my experience there with three other colleagues or be four of us. So we're looking forward to that as well. Imani? Yes, please remember to, uh, so yeah, that's gonna be a great show. We're gonna make that happen, Bernard. And we want to make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube page, Progressively Yours Health and Wellness Podcast. And like us on Facebook, join us on LinkedIn. And um, yeah, and give us your feedback. And we are, we're just starting out. So if you know of amazing people and organizations that you'd like for us to feature and interview, we're, we're open to that too. So you can always, yeah. um, you can always contact us and probably best through one of one of the sites or the Sankofa Institute for wellness at gmail.com that just went across the screen. S A N K O F A I N S T the number four wellness at gmail.com. And that's probably going to do it for us this evening. So stay tuned. Come back next Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. We love you all. Peace out. Thank you.